Hello friends. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Eguru for you. Please. Like. Subscribe. And. Press bell icon to get notified my educational videos. In this video, genetic engineering will be discussed under the headings 1. Introduction, 2. Steps involved in genetic engineering. 3. Advantages of genetic engineering. 4. Disadvantages of genetic engineering. The genetic engineering may be carried out in following steps. 1. Identification of source of gene of interest. 2. Isolation of gene of interest. 3. Insertion of gene of interest into vector. 4. Introduction of recombinant vector into host cell. 5. Selection of transformed cell. 6. Multiplication of transformed cell. The source of gene of interest can be identified by forward or reverse genetics. Forward genetics is an approach to identify genes or set of genes responsible for a particular phenotype of an organism. It can be achieved through genetic mapping, map-based cloning, insertional mutagenesis, random mutations, etc. Reverse genetics is used to analyze the phenotype of an organism following the disruption of a known gene. It may involve RNAi, antisense RNA, CRISPR, CA's genome editing, tilling, etc. The gene of interest must be separated from the extracted DNA. The DNA sequence may be unknown or known. If DNA sequence is not known then a common method is to break the DNA up with a random digestion method. This is usually accomplished using restriction enzymes. A partial restriction digest cuts only some of the restriction sites, resulting in overlapping DNA fragment segments. The DNA fragments are put into individual plasmid vectors and grown inside bacteria. Once in the bacteria, the plasmid is copied as the bacteria divides. To determine if a useful gene is present on a particular fragment the DNA library is screened for the desired phenotype. If the phenotype is detected then it is possible that the bacteria contain the target gene. If the gene does not have a detectable phenotype or a DNA library does not contain the correct gene, other methods must be used to isolate it. If the position of the gene can be determined using molecular markers then chromosome walking is one way to isolate the correct DNA fragment. If the gene expresses close homology to a known gene in another species, then it could be isolated by searching for genes in the library that closely match the known gene. For known DNA sequences, restriction enzymes that cut the DNA on either side of the gene can be used. Gel electrophoresis then sorts the fragments according to length. Some gels can separate sequences that differ by a single base pair. The DNA can be visualized by staining it with ethidium bromide and photographing under UV light. A marker with fragments of known lengths can be laid alongside the DNA to estimate the size of each band. The DNA band at the correct size should contain the gene, where it can be excised from the gel. Another technique to isolate genes of known sequences involves polymerase chain reaction. PCR is a powerful tool that can amplify a given sequence, which can then be isolated through gel electrophoresis. Its effectiveness drops with larger genes and it has the potential to introduce errors into the sequence. In this step, the gene of interest is inserted into the suitable molecular vector with the help of restriction endonuclease and DNA ligase enzymes to form recombinant DNA. There are different types of vectors which can be used as per the requirement like plasmid, cosmid, phagemid, BAC, PAC, YAC, etc. Once the gene is constructed it must be stably integrated into the target organism's genome or exist as extrachromosomal DNA. There are a number of techniques available for inserting the gene into the host genome and they vary depending on the type of organism targeted. One. Transformation. Transformation is the direct alteration of a cell's genetic components by passing the genetic material through the cell membrane. About 1% of bacteria are naturally able to take up foreign DNA, but this ability can be induced in other bacteria. 
Stressing the bacteria with a heat shock or electroporation can make the cell membrane permeable to DNA that may then be incorporated into the genome or exist as extrachromosomal DNA. Electroporation is another method of promoting competence. In this method the cells are briefly shocked with an electric field of 10 to 20 kV per centimeter, which is thought to create holes in the cell membrane through which the plasmid DNA may enter. After the electric shock, the holes are rapidly closed by the cell's membrane repair mechanisms. Uptake in DNA can either integrate with the bacterial's genome or, more commonly, exist as extrachromosomal DNA. In plants, the DNA is often inserted using agrobacterium-mediated recombination, taking advantage of the agrobacterium's tDNA sequence that allows natural insertion of genetic material into plant cells. Another method used to transform plant cells is biolistics, where particles of gold or tungsten are coated with DNA and then shot into young plant cells or plant embryos. Some genetic material enters the cells and transforms them. Plant cells can also be transformed using electroporation, which uses an electric shock to make the cell membrane permeable to plasmid DNA. Due to the damage caused to the cells and DNA, the transformation efficiency of biolistics and electroporation is lower than agrobacterial transformation. 2. Transfection. Transformation has a different meaning in relation to animals, indicating progression to a cancerous state, so the process used to insert foreign DNA into animal cells is usually called transfection. There are many ways to directly introduce DNA into animal cells in vitro. Often these cells are stem cells that are used for gene therapy. Chemical-based methods use as natural or synthetic compounds to form particles that facilitate the transfer of genes into cells. These synthetic vectors have the ability to bind DNA and accommodate large genetic transfers. One of the simplest methods involves using calcium phosphate to bind the DNA and then exposing it to cultured cells. The solution, along with the DNA, is encapsulated by the cells. Liposomes and polymers can be used as vectors to deliver DNA into cultured animal cells. Positively charged liposomes bind with DNA, while polymers can design that interact with DNA. They form lipoplexes and polyplexes respectively, which are then uptaken by the cells. Other techniques include using electroporation and biolistics. To create transgenic animals the DNA must be inserted into viable embryos or eggs. This is usually accomplished using microinjection, where DNA is injected through the cell's nuclear envelope directly into the nucleus. Another method is embryonic stem cell mediated gene transfer. The gene is transfected into embryonic stem cells and then they are inserted into mouse blastocysts that are then implanted into foster mothers. The resulting offspring are chimeric, and further mating can produce mice fully transgenic with the gene of interest. 4. Transduction. Transduction is the process by which foreign DNA is introduced into a cell by a virus or viral vector. Genetically modified viruses can be used as viral vectors to transfer target genes to another organism in gene therapy. In genetic engineering, after introduction of recombinant DNA molecules into host cells, it is important to select the host cell that takes up the transformed cell from those that do not. It can be achieved by selectable marker gene or reported gene. Selectable marker genes are present on vector into which the DNA of interest has been cloned. These genes protect the organism from a selective agent that would normally kill it. All cells that do not contain the foreign DNA are killed in the presence of selective agent and only the desired ones are left behind. Commonly used selectable marker genes are neomycine phosphotransferase, glyphosate oxidoreductase, thymidine kinase, etc. Reported genes are alternative to selectable marker genes which help in distinguishing between wanted and unwanted cells. Examples of reported genes are beta-galactosidase, chloramphenicol acetyltransferase, nepaline synthase, etc. 
As only a single cell is transformed with genetic material, the organism must be regenerated from that single cell. Bacteria consist of a single cell and reproduce clonally so regeneration is not necessary. In plants this is accomplished through the use of tissue culture. In animals it is necessary to ensure that the inserted DNA is present in the embryonic stem cells. Advantages of genetic engineering 1. It follows the same scientific principles that have been practiced for generations. Humans have been manipulating plant and animal life since the beginning of our history. Genetic engineering just increases the speed at which this progress can occur. 2. It makes agricultural practices much safer. Before genetic engineering, farmers would often use heavy amounts of herbicides or pesticides to maximize their yields. With modern scientific practices, we can reduce, if not eliminate, the need for anything to be applied to crops. That makes the work safer, creates healthier soils, and reduces the risks of groundwater contamination all at the same time. It creates greater yields, we can also use genetic engineering to create larger yields from our crops. We can manipulate the DNA of plants to create more fruits or more vegetables. It allows us to create better food products. Genetic engineering allows us to create food products that have a better nutritional profile. That means we can get what we need nutritionally from fewer food products. In return, more food can be shipped to areas of the world where food insecurity is a major problem. It can improve the growth rates of crops. Genetic engineering can also increase the rate of maturity that can be achieved for products within our food chain. 6. It allows specific traits to be developed for plants and animals. Scientists can use DNA manipulation to create different food colors. A wider range of produce can be created by combining different items, like tomatoes and blueberries. Cows can be developed to produce more milk. Poultry can grow more muscle tissue at a faster rate. 7. It can improve disease resistance. 8. It can increase the amount of available crop land for growing. Genetic engineering makes it possible for plants to grow outside of their normal growing seasons. They can also be modified to grow in harsher climates compared to plants without genetic engineering. 9. It could stop genetic diseases in humans. Genetic engineering could open a new field of medicine for humanity. We already have genetic testing in place to test for certain cancers. We could use DNA manipulation to help treat or cure people who are born with genetic disorders. 10. It could produce novel medical treatments. Genetic engineering is already used in medicine to create a variety of treatments. We have vaccines, insulin, and even hormone treatments available because of genetic engineering. As this science progresses, we can create more treatments that allow us to be proactive more often against pathogens that can have life-threatening characteristics. Disadvantages of genetic engineering 1. It is a technology that can be easily abused. We currently have laws and treaties in place to prevent genetic engineering abuse. That doesn't mean it won't ever happen. The reality of genetic engineering is that DNA insertion could be used to create severe problems for certain groups of people. 2. It creates difficult legal liabilities with unintended consequences. The crops which have been genetically engineered have had their seeds spread to other fields, causing unintended growth where they land. 3. It limits the amount of diversity that is available. Although genetic engineering seems like it would increase diversity, it actual Y decreases it. That is because one preferred product becomes the focus of the industry when it performs well. 4. It may have negative consequences when interacting with other species. Over time, the species with genetic engineering tends to be the dominant one, removing the traits from domestic species over time. This also works against species diversity and create problems, such as a lack of disease resistance, in the future. 5. It can have unintended negative consequences. Genetic engineering may be a proven science, but outcomes are not always predictable. Dolly the sheep is credited as being the first mammal cloned from an adult somatic cell. 
what is not often publicized is that Dolly was the only lamb that was born out of 277 attempts at the cloning process. 6. It only prolongs the resilience effect, the changes made are not permanent benefits. More modifications are required over time because nature eventually adapts. Pathogens become stronger to affect the stronger plants and animals. Our own experience with antibiotics and pathogens is evidence of this fact. Several bacteria have gained resistance to the antibiotics that were used to treat them. It has even led to the development of multi-resistant organisms that fight almost all easily available antibiotics. 7. It does not guarantee high nutritional values. We can genetically engineer plants and animals to have high nutritional values, but there is no guarantee that the outcome will match what has been envisioned. 8. It could create new pathogens. The goal of increasing resistance to certain pests or disease may happen through genetic engineering, but the genes of resistance can also be transfer read to the pests or the pathogens. That creates a spiral of increasing risk to the human food chain, especially if the pathogen can affect multiple species. 9. It can lead to more birth defects. Genetic engineering may create stronger, healthier plants and animals. It may also create more plants and animals with mutations or birth defects that can harm the species. 10. It turns animals into commodities. Genetic engineering could be used for enhancing meat production but it could affect overall health of the animals.